Um, Major General Richard Uto, uh, the Command of Mountain Division, and also the Command of uh, our operations taking place in uh, Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. So you're most welcome. Here, in the heart of Democratic Republic of Congo jungle, where the Allied Democratic forces have been hiding and causing havoc, poor terrain, but the Uganda People's Defense Forces, UPDF, and the armed forces of Democratic Republic of Congo soldiers FADAC are determined to flush ADF out of the jungles. I will take you back from the time I took over the command and administration of uh, Mountain Division. That was in late May this year. Uh, I'm not going to talk about uh, the past achievements and what happened before it, uh, I came in as the commander, because uh, I believe you had it. Uh, I started operating in June, and this is October, so I'm about uh, three, and this is the fourth month. Uh, the operations have been very successful. So when I took over, the most important thing was first to consolidate the achievements, to ensure that whatever we have achieved in the past could not again be interrupted by the enemy. And what are these achievements? Quite a number of them. Number one is uh, the area liberated from the activities of uh, the Allied Democratic Forces. They are now free of the enemy. And uh, which areas are these? Uh, these are former bases of the enemy, like in Malika, which uh, uh, those areas, they fall under Sector 1 and Sector 2 and Sector 3. Uh, people have gone back to their villages. When you are crossing uh, the Kasindi border post, you find that there is a very serious uh, uh, business activities taking place. People have come back to their places, especially training centers along the road. And you could see a lot of economic activities taking place. People are, uh, schools are opened. Uh, a number of uh, people are cultivating. The churches are operating. The high DPs have gone back to their homes. The roads have been worked on. And you really see life. So my first our task was to ensure that uh, we consolidate this achievement and they are no longer interrupted by, by the enemy. Uh, when I went to the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, I found still there was a pocket of the enemy in two sectors. Sector 1 and Sector 3, they were now free of the enemy because when they were defeated in the previous two operations, they ran to Sector 2 and Sector 4. So my biggest task was now to ensure that they are defeated from those sectors, which we did. Uh, by August, we did not have any enemy presence in uh, Sector 2. When I talk of sec Sector 2, what am I referring to? Uh, I'm referring to areas east of uh, Beni City up to Bunia, the road from Beni City to Bunia. Bunia City is in uh, Ituri province. So the whole of eastern part of that area does not have any enemy groups as I talk now. And these are the areas that are directly bordering Uganda. So uh, enemy presence east of that road means an insecurity to our border and they can easily, you know, infiltrate and disturb our people. Last you are aware, we had some uh, activities by an enemy against the tourists and also a certain school where they came and banned the, the, the children. So, uh, after clearing them from Sector 2, we had to go to Sector 4. Currently, as I talk, we don't have any enemy groups in Sector 4. These are the western areas of uh, Bene, Bunia, and then Bene Mambasa, which is like a triangle. Where did they go? They moved in two groups. One group crossed Mambasa, Ituri Road. They are now heading north, further north. 
and uh, from further north what will be the next destination i don't know maybe they will go to garamba where we were in those days looking for the lost register name of joseph Kony, which operated in northern uganda for more than two decades and then another group has moved down south very far from our area of responsibility and those areas are now even uh, nearing the eastern part of kisangani province so you could see that uh, most of the areas that used to be under the allied democratic forces are now free so these are some of the achievements that we have done and in the process uh, we have rescued a number of abductees uh, these are women and other citizens from the region who were abducted by the enemy uh, right now as i talk I have more than 50 in my headquarters here some of them are from the neighboring countries like there is a lady from tanzania there's also another lady from burundi and uh, there are also children born in captivity these are the children of uh, the, the the rebels we also have them here some of them are orphans. some of them their parents remained in in, in the bush so we have them here and uh, in the process uh, definitely we acquired a number of uh, guns uh, which we have them i'm not proud to talk about the enemy skills because some of them if there was a way of making them come out that would be very good and uh, we, have, we have also captured uh, quite a number of equipment uh, these are the materials they use for making improvised explosive devices uh, solars uh, useless luggages these are their personal belongings and uh, people are now going back to those areas which used to be under the enemy and you could see life is coming back to those places maybe uh, in future we can uh, take you to some of those places and you witness and see what is happening so the joint operations with uh, the forces of the drc is going on very well and uh, the direction is very clear the enemy is now degraded the capacity to fight the joint forces has been reduced however they still remain a big threat because the, this is a terrorist group and they mainly kill the populations you could have seen how they have been killing some civilians beheading some people just to uh, make that propaganda war and that is what is happening and uh, the adf is no longer a ugandan thing because the, some of the fighters uh, from the region is now a regional problem so while we are there to fight them it's also something that the region should come in and we ensure that they are defeated once and for all i think it briefly this is what i could tell you as far as our achievements are concerned uganda people's defense forces senior commander major general richard oto succeeded major general d Colum, brought a fresh sense of determination to the battlefield leading from the front and inspiring the joint troops to push forward against the allied democratic forces adf rebels the areas that we are operating in are the two highways one is from that's a I meaning from our border one is from uh, mpondo that's uganda border then the other side in the other is kasindi then you move straight to beni which is a very big city then from beni you proceed uh, down south to Botembo city it's a commercial city then uh, the second highway which is from our border is from uh, uh, Rusese, direct to Abunia. But also there are other internal highways within uh, the areas we have already liberated, like um, from Bene to Bunia, from Bene to Kisangani. These roads are now very, very busy. Uh, if you go there, you will be surprised by the number of uh, commercial vehicles are traveling, uh, taking goods, transporting uh, the local uh, goods produced within the country including uh, these agricultural products so people are free to move there is no r a single road in areas that we control that has been cut off by the enemy so, so people are busy doing their normal uh, activities on the ground uh civilian trucks no they're not escorted since I've been there for about three months, I have never, never seen any escorts being provided to these civilian trucks. It is only maybe my military convoys when they are moving, because these are soldiers, and definitely they have to, you know, move with uh, our logistics uh, supplies. 
but for civilian trucks we don't escort them along the roads along the highways we have our deployments and uh, it's a uh, routine that uh, we do the patrols okay we don't just sit uh, there's only forces they move all around where they suspect so that's also part of providing security but not putting armed escorts to escort civilian convoys from point a to point z no a message to our business as as right is the Kampala who are coming because Congo is now this hub for most of the Africa. Uh already they are moving and uh I think they're they are doing well in their businesses. Uh they move even at night. There is no problem. We have not had any complaints from our people, both the Congolese and uh, the Ugandan traders. So I would uh, encourage them that uh, as they do their businesses, let them be a security conscious. Uh, we have the UPDF deployed along the highways. Uh, if there are challenges related to security, they're always free to get in touch with us and then uh, we work it out with our counterparts. That, that's uh, within the joint forces and we see how to mitigate those challenges. But I would encourage them to continue doing their businesses, of course, uh, with discipline, and it should be strictly business, not diverted to do other political activities. Uh, this is the challenge now, because uh, when you are following a group, they are mixed up. They are fighters within the group, they have their families both to women and children born in captivity and they are also abducted, including their wives because some of them were abducted forcefully and made wives in the bush. Now our mission is to degrade the enemy, fight them, ensure that uh, we kill them, recover their guns. But also you have the civilians. So how do you separate the two? With Uganda People's Defense Force, we have that experience because we have been fighting the Lord's Jesus which has been very notorious. This is Major General Richard Otto's determination and new dimension to Operation Suja, the war against ADF. The outcome is viable, and the joint military operations between UPDF and, and the FADAKA forces aim to contribute to the broader goal. Uh, Congo is a very big country, I think it's about, I don't know how many sides of Uganda, maybe about three or more than that. Uh, where we are operating in is also quite big and uh, being everywhere is being nowhere so while you have already liberated some places you also have to maintain your presence to ensure that the enemy does not make any use and uh, when you're expanding following the enemy as i've told you earlier that some of them are heading towards kisangane others are moving north of uh, ituri and they may end up in garamba if we are to follow them, then you are overstretching yourselves, and this requires more boots on ground. So these are some of the challenges. And uh, when it comes to the population, they are very good uh, with us, but now rescuing the abductees, as I've already explained before, it remains a, bit, a big challenge because the, what do we have to bring back on table? Just guns and uh, maybe other equipment. We also need to bring back those Ugandans, rescue them and rejuvenated with their, their families. But now when they continue going with the rebels, that's another problem. Uh, terrorists, any terrorist group worldwide, they're after a symmetric war. They don't care killing innocent lives. Uh, you could have seen on the social media how they have been beheading some innocent civilians. Uh, in a situation like that, we are not only also to fight the rebels, but also to ensure that uh, we defend the population. So as you are defending in some places where we don't operate in because it's outside my area of responsibility, people are being killed and that's not good. So these are the challenges and we would not like to see that. But uh, all efforts are being done to ensure that uh, we mitigate some of these challenges. The Allied Democratic Forces ADF have suffered significant losses, including the loss of their major camps and currently the joint forces have been making gains against the ADF rebels and the pursuit is ongoing. Mon maintain momentum means being on the enemy toes all the time. And that's my mission. 
They cannot just sit and allow the enemy to recognize, to go kill civilians when we are just seated now. So the momentum will be maintained. And how to do it, those are the details now. But the rebels, they know. Because how did we rescue the abductees? How are we capturing them? How are we getting the guns? So that's the momentum, the, the, the maintenance of the momentum, the momentum, and we have to ensure that uh, it is continuous. Uh, it varies from one country to another country, from one, one kind of operation to another kind of operation. In northern Uganda, that rebel groups, they were very serious and uh, they were looking at capturing Kampala. You remember the loss is Saname, the last group fought for more than 20 years, but uh, they were defeated when they reached Sorote in 2005-4, I think. Uh, in the north, they were also killing people. That was the, another group. In South Sudan, when they crossed there, not only the losses and army, but also what other rebel groups like the West Nile Bank Front. And then uh, in Central African Republic, these are the LR when they were defeated, they crossed the other side. In Somalia, is a terrorist group, and we, had, we went there to contribute to the regional peace, and that's our contribution now, as to Uganda. So you, you, you can see that it varies from one place to another one. Now, coming back to your question, uh, this one of Congo. Unfortunately, unlike the Al Sabab, who could maybe just kill civilians when they explode, but there's an area controlled by Al Sabab. They have their own system. I was in Somalia twice. They have their courts, and in some places where they control, they are with their people. Not the, those who support them, but people are within the areas that they have already liberated. But in Congo, they, they are killing civilians. They are, they are killing the people around them. They don't want to see any, any human beings. So this is the problem. So where are the rebels? Wherever they go, they have to kill. People are running, especially areas where we don't have the joint forces. So uh, in Congo, it's a bit unique, and uh, the area is white. There is that element of uh, forest, I've already told you about that, which you know gives the enemy more opportunity to hide. But uh, for the infantry, we go anywhere, whether it's a mountain, in the forest, in the river, we have that advantage. And as the government, that is how we can even be height of the enemy. So those challenges, they, they, they vary from one place to another. The joint forces are utilizing the combination of military operations, intelligence gathering, and community engagement to combat the allied democratic forces edif rebels in the jungles. Uh, I want to thank them for supporting these uh, operations in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo because we are we are we are we are the children from uh, from the various families in Uganda. Uh, the Uganda People's Defense Forces we are not coming from 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 heaven. Uh, the, that support alone is enough. That's number one. And then number two, very unfortunate for the families whose children were either recruited under the disguise of getting jobs in DRC, or they could have disappeared, or they were recruited without them knowing much about the ADF. Now government is trying to ensure that uh, we rescue your children, we get them back, and uh, we reunite them with you. So you must have that hope that one day your children will be brought back by the UPDF, especially the ones who are going to be rescued. We are already doing it. Like right now, in, in, in the headquarters here, I have about eight uh, ladies. They were abducted. And these ladies, some of them are from Kampala, one is from Barara, the rest are from Eastern Uganda. And uh, they are going to be reunited with their families through the government is going to do that after rehabilitating them. And that post of rehabilitation, they are going to be empowered with maybe some uh, skills that can help them after they are reunited with their families. Because uh, some of them have taken more than uh, 15 years. And you can imagine a child who disappeared now coming back with other children because he's already a mother. Okay? 
So let them have the hope that the Uganda People's Defense Forces is doing all it takes to ensure that uh, we defend this enemy. Then for our people along the border, uh, it's not yet over until it's over. Uh, the ADF is still there. Let them be security conscious. Uh, when they see new uh, suspicious uh, face or characters from anywhere, let them you know work with the local security and also the local leaders to ensure that uh, we find out who is this one coming. Because the, we are still operating there and we don't know what happens at the end of the day. But uh, we are look at defeating the enemy and then we come back home to ensure that uh, there is total peace, not only for our people in Uganda, but also for the Eastern uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, where it's is neighboring Uganda. So for Ugandans, uh, this operation has succeeded. Uh, you may not be having a lot or updated on a daily basis, but I want to assure you that uh, uh, UPDF has done a lot. Uh, the enemy is no longer a big threat along the border. They have been uh, degraded and removed, and they are very far from our border, and we are operating there. So we are uh, uh, Uganda People's Defense Forces. We are part of your families, and uh, we need your support. In Biakato, Mambasa Territory, 67 kilometers northwest of Beni, in Italy province, Allied Democratic Forces scattered group suffered heavy losses after encountering the joint forces of the Armed Forces of Democratic Republic of Congo, FADAC, and Uganda People's Defense Forces, UPDF soldiers. Uh, I think about our president, you know his contribution to the region. And uh, he has done a lot to ensure that the region gets peace. Because peace in the neighboring country is peace at home. When the neighbor is suffering, you will never have that peace. And I think uh, this is what our president has been doing. Not just the military operations, but also his political and diplomatic uh, involvement in some of these initiatives. What message do you have for those who are still in the bush, but they have that fear of coming out, maybe they are going to be imprisoned? Uh, unfortunately, there is a very serious propaganda within the enemy camps. Uh, they deceive them that when they get out, they are killed. Uh, they deceive them that when they get out, they are not going to be reunited with their family. But uh, we are not new of such propaganda, okay, mercenaries doing the enemy. Uh, the ones who are already with us, they can testify. When we pick them with the helicopters from uh, the buses, why did you bring them here? We wanted them to get well treated. And some of them are already reunited with their families, like the Ugandans who were brought here before. Some of them were abducted, you know, they, they, they were recruited. And uh, some of them were, you know, deceived that you are going coming to, to get jobs, only to end up in, in the jungles. So uh, I want to tell those who can listen to me, especially the ones who are still with the enemy, let them come back home. There is nothing like killing them. In fact, they will be more received by the joint forces and they will be reunited with their families. And there are quite a number of them who have already come out. Uh, they have been sending messages to them. They have also confirmed that uh, they are alive. And their families could also help to send messages to their children who are still in, in, with the rebels. The government of Uganda and the government of uh, DRC, they have no problems with uh, getting back these uh, former fighters. Even the ones who have surrendered. There's nothing that we can do. We know some of them have committed atrocities, they have killed civilians, they have burned houses, they have done all evils. But still, we receive them because we know how they were misled. So it's very clear those who can escape, let them escape and report to the nearest uh, center, or to the nearest uh, uh, for, uh, positions of joint forces. They will be received and reunited with their forces. Uh, civilian trucks, no, they're not escorted. Since I've been there for about three months, I have never, never seen any escorts being provided to these civilian trucks. It is only maybe my military convoys when they're moving, because these are soldiers, and definitely they have to you know, move with uh, our logistics uh, supplies. But for civilian trucks, we don't escort them. Along the roads, along the highways, we have our deployments, and uh, it's a uh, routine that uh, we do the patrols, okay? We don't just sit. Uh, there's no forces. They move all around where they suspect. So that's also part of providing security, but not putting armed escorts to 
escort civilian convoys from point A to point Z now. Uh, already they are moving and uh, I think they are, they are doing well in their businesses. Uh, they move even at night. There is no problem. We have not had any complaints from our people, both the Congolese and uh, the Ugandan traders. So I would uh, encourage them that uh, as they do their businesses, let them be a security conscious. Uh, we have the UPDF deployed along the highways. Uh, if there are challenges related to security, they're always free to get in touch with us and then uh, we work it out with our counterparts. That, that's uh, within the joint forces and we see how to mitigate those challenges. But I would encourage them to continue doing their businesses, of course, uh, with discipline and it should be strictly business, not diverted to do other political activities. The Light Democratic Force, ADF, has reportedly relocated far away from the Joint Forces Sector 4, and the UPDF and Fadaka forces are actively pursuing them.